Let's talk about how bunnies like to play and most importantly, how to build their trust in this video. and rabbit behaviorist and we are the bunnies brigade we are on a mission to get people rethinking rabbit care by proving how intelligent bunnies really are wally you are not helping the cause this is the second part of a two-part series where we're discussing why rabbits are misunderstood and how we can change that if you missed part one you can click up here to check it out i'll also leave a link in the description box below it was great food for thought we learned why people often consider rabbits to be cage animals and why we should stop thinking in this old-fashioned way so you said no to a hutch you've thrown out the cage and now your rabbits are living in your home but we need to take all that we've now learned about them as prey animals and respect that as we interact and build a relationship with them all pets need to be given a chance and time to adjust to their new living situation it's just with rabbits you have to take things a little slower just be a bit more gentle dogs and cats are predatory they have far less to fear and with the exception of a few shy cases that means they can much easier and much quicker adjust to us and the weird human things we do. The way an animal plays is a reflection of their instinctual behavior. Play helps them improve their survival skills. For example, a dog sometimes likes to play rough, which lends itself to them learning how to kill their prey. How do rabbits play? What's a rabbit's instinctual behavior? Hey Wally, I feel like in hindsight we should have saved that watership down quote for this video. Because there's a little more to it. All the world will be your enemy, prince with a thousand enemies. And whenever they catch you, they will kill you. But first they must catch you. Digger. Listener. Runner. Prince with the swift warning. Be cunning and full of tricks and your people will never be destroyed. I'm just gonna say again, read Wardship Down. It's so good at giving insight into a rabbit's perspective. And understanding how an animal perceives the world is so essential to building trust and successfully training. Digging and running. In his book, Richard Adams liked to describe these as gifts given to rabbits. These are instincts to practice escaping from predators, preparing burrows to safely hide. Chewing. Chewing is a part of digging, and they have to do it in order to keep their teeth healthy. It's super important to provide your rabbit with toys they're allowed to dig in or chew on to their heart's content. This is behavior that cannot be avoided, so we have to redirect this energy onto those toys instead of your carpet, walls, wires, or furniture. And of course, don't forget to bunny-proof your home. Bunny-proofing is a big part of owning a rabbit that can't be neglected. In a rabbit's eyes, they go to a lot of work to scout out and establish their escape paths. So let's respect that. Ask yourself, is this wire or is this bag in a potential rabbit escape path? If yes, remove it or bunny-proof it. Instead of that killer hunting instinct that I mentioned with dogs and cats, as herbivores, rabbits forage for food. So they're all about their foraging toys. I do like to browse the dog toy section for any of those toys that are designed to stimulate the finding instinct that dogs do have, because they're great for our little foragers. Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you, Greg? When I talk about building a relationship with your rabbit, I like to think of it like a circle of trust that to start with, we are firmly on the outside of. We have to be granted entry inside. Now a surefire way of being barred from the circle is by picking up your rabbit a lot, forcing them to cuddle with you. Rabbits just don't like that. Yes, there are some exceptions to the rule and you can train a rabbit to be okay with being picked up, but for the majority of rabbits, it's like being carried away by a bird of prey it's scary. So unless you have a very good reason for picking them up, let's try and gain trust before doing so. The best way to begin is by lying on the floor so you're at their level. 
Don't seek them out, just sit or lie down where they can see you. Let them come up and meet you in their own time. It's also a great idea to eat an apple or a banana whilst you're there because they'll find it difficult to resist these high value foods. You can then reward them by sharing some. Refrain from touching them straight away, especially if you have a particularly shy or defensive rabbit. When they do permit you to touch, start by using the back of your hand, as this avoids resembling a predator's claws or talons. Faces are even less intimidating, and most rabbits are more than happy to bump noses with you. Whether with your hands or your face, approach from their sides or above nose level to accommodate for their field of vision. Let them clearly see your intention so that they have a choice to move away if they want and let you know if they're not comfortable. If you have any questions about bonding with your rabbit, if you're having trouble gaining access into that circle, please go ahead, ask away, I'll be happy to help out. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell and we'll see you in the next one.